Hi, I'm Steve Sloka, uh, and today I wanted to walk through a blog post that we just wrote called HTTP Proxy in Action. So this post looks to give you a practical implementation of how this new CRD we've written called HTTP Proxy functions. Um, so you'll be able to apply some YAML to a real cluster, make some requests, and actually get a feel for how this functions and works, again, with a real cluster. Uh, Dave wrote a big, uh, a nice article, if you're curious, of the reasons why we went from ingress route to this new CRD. Um, and, and I encourage you to go look, look forward to this one. Uh, read through it, um, and Dave gives you a good background as to our experience over the last year, the reasons why we, we wrote this new CRD, and the, the problems we had to solve. So go poke through that one. Um, so cool, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to need is a cluster. Um, and I've written another blog post, if this helps, uh, to get Kubernetes up and running with Kind. So Kind is a tool to run um, Kubernetes clusters in Docker containers as nodes. Um, so again, it's really easy. It works on Linux, works on Macs, works on Windows. Um, this isn't the only way to do it. So however you want to do this, feel free to go and get yourself uh, a cluster spun up. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and use this just to, to simplify our demo here today. But if you want to see how that's done, you can walk through this as well. Great. So here I have my, my cluster. It's up and running. It's a 116.1 cluster, again, running in kind. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and deploy some sample applications. So we need um, some sample namespaces and sample um, services and deployments to help us get started. And that's what this one's going to do. So we'll go ahead and run this command here. Great. And what we created was this namespace to, to work out of, and this is called Project Contour Roots. This is, a good work, this is where we're going to start deploying our proxies out of. So this is the top level um, root namespace we're going to um, have these all live in. Um, we created some some deployments and services. Now these deployments just spit out a couple things. They spit out the name of the app, and that'll help us see which app responds to what request. Um, it spits out the path that gets that got routed, as well as all, all the headers. When we get to the header piece, that'll be that'll be helpful. Great, and we created a root app and a secure app. Again, we'll we'll see how these these fit in here in a second. Now that we have those deployed, we'll go and deploy some proxies. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go copy this guy. Um, and what we're going to see here is this, this, this is the output of what that proxy is. Um, we're going to call it root, and we're going to give it a domain name. So we're using local.projectcontour.io. And you can use that in your cluster. We have this resolving to localhost today from our public DNS at Project Contour. Um, and we have some conditions on here. So this is what's new. So conditions are new to proxy. And what conditions do, do is they define what needs to be met for this route to match. Um, and here we've defined a path prefix of slash for this application, and we have a, a path prefix of slash secure for this one. Um, so what this means is that any request to slash is going to route to this service, any request to this um, path is going to use this service. Let's go ahead and apply that, and then we'll see how this functions. All right, so copy that. All right, so we created our proxy. So if we go ahead and get our proxies, and we'll see we've got one. Again, it's called root, and here's our domain name. So now, if we do a curl, so I do a curl on HTTP uh, local.projectcontour.io slash, I should get the default site. Again, okay, this is the default site with slash. If we make the same request to slash secure, you'll see I get the secure site. Secure, secure site to slash secure. And that's what we defined here, right? We've defined two conditions on each route saying where things should route. All right, so let's, let's look at conditions a little further. So if we scroll down here, we can also add other things now. So before an in ingress route, the only thing that we could route on was path prefix. Well, now with proxy, we have this new set of um, routable conditions. And one of those conditions is called headers. And with header, I can do a contains match on a header. I can do an exact match, which means that the, the value of the header must match exactly to what we've typed here. I can do a not exact and not contains. And those just inverse the other ones. So if I said not contains, this would not match Chrome being in the, in, in the value of the user agent string. Right, so we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and, and add this proxy here, or update our root proxy, so this is the same one. And again, so just to review what the request should look like, and need to slash should route to root app. Any request to slash secure is gonna hit this now new secure wrap default. And then anything to secure with the user agent of Chrome is gonna route to the secure app, right? So we've kind of come up with a, uh, a very simple security app to say the user agent needs to match for this to, to application to be routed to. All right, so let's go ahead and apply this one. All 
All right, we've configured that now. So now let's review our request again. So if I do a curl and I curl to slash, I should get the default site. Slash secure should give me the default secure app site, which is here. Again, slash secure. And that's because our, our user agent does not match Chrome. Right now our user agent is curl. So we don't have the word Chrome in the value of this header. And that's why we don't match the, the proper secure one. If I make the same request and I do slash host is user agent of Chrome, now what happens is I get the secure site again. And again, that's because our route requires us to match slash secure on the path, as well as the user agent containing Chrome. And if you're interested, again, this is a contains, right? So if, if I added extra characters around this one, you'll see it still matches properly because our request says that it's got to match or contain the value Chrome somewhere in the value of that string or that, that header. Okay, so now you can see how we can apply conditions now to routes, right? And these all get stuck together um, on a route. You can have as many as you'd like. Uh, there's a limitation of one prefix per condition, and it's just because it would make sense to have two prefixes. Um, but you can have as many headers as you'd like, depending on what, what uh, route you'd like to set up. Okay, so now I'm going to just go ahead and implement um, includes. So the idea of an include is that it works just like delegation did with ingress route. So an include is the way to implement a multi-team cluster. So what you can do is you can carve off portions of a request and let another team manage the, that portion of that request. So what I want to do is I want to create a marketing team. And we're going to give them a, their own namespace and let them work out of their own, uh, this namespace that we're going to create. And we're going to carve off a piece of the request and pass it off to this team and say, hey, you can manage this part of the request all by yourself. And what proxy does, and this is the same way that Ingress route wanted to solve, was that it allows teams to work this way. In Ingress today, in current Kubernetes Ingress, there isn't a way to help define this properly, right? So teams can create conflicting records by defining the same domain with the same path and causing um, issues and production issues in their, in their requests and their clusters. So proxy doesn't allow this, right? When I carve off portions of these requests, only that team is allowed to manage that request. Um, if someone else tries to match that same one, Contra will throw it out because they don't have the proper the proper authority to do that. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and create an include. And you'll see this this is the include now again in our root proxy. So from this root, we're going to pass off to this new team called marketing, and we're going to give that proxy called blog site permissions to slash blog. Right, they're going to get included this condition. So what happens is is if we come down here. This is the new blog site proxy for the marketing team. And what happens is, is any condition defined on an include is automatically appended to, the, to that child proxy. So when this contour processes through these documents, it's going to take all of the conditions defined here on this include and add them to this other proxy automatically. So even though we haven't defined any conditions on this proxy here, on this child, contour will automatically add these conditions, in this case, prefix slash blog, to this proxy. So what the result will be is that the, the marketing team will house the website at slash blog and the service www.blog will, will respond to those requests. So let's go ahead and do this. So let's go ahead and apply this prebax again. So this is going to create the marketing team namespace as well as a couple sample apps again. Great. Now that we have that, let's go and update our proxy. So again, we're going to update the root proxy to have it um, it uh, have includes to the to the child of the um, blog site, and then we'll create the blog site proxy to now handle the request to slash blog. Let's go ahead and review our proxies and see how these look. So now we have two, like we said. Again, this is our root and this is our blog site. You can see they're both valid. So if now if I do a curl, and I do a curl to slash blog, what you'll see is the blog site answers. Right, and this was the new app that we just deployed in the marketing namespace. So now again, they're, they're self-managing their own applications. So what, they can do whatever they want with this path prefix of slash blog. Great. So next what we can do is we're going to go ahead and, and, and let them do that. So a typical thing is that because now they have slash blog, they're going to go create more um, applications that live inside that, that namespace. So they're going to go create one that's slash info. And they want to have this info one work. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new proxy that handles this info site, right? This is the info service. 
what we're going to do is now we're going to do another include. So from the blog site proxy living in the marketing namespace, this is what the root delegates to. This one's now going to add another its own include. All right, and it's going to include a prefix of slash info. And again, because we talked about how these conditions are appended together on an include, the root has an include of slash blog to this proxy called blog site. And now this proxy is going to add another set of conditions to this other one called info site. So the result is that this info site is going to end up with, with basically the, the conditions of slash blog slash info appended to it because of all of these two sets of includes, right? And they all get smashed together and applied at the end. So let's go ahead and apply that and see that. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this one. Great. So now if we hit slash blog again, we'll still get the blog site, which is nothing's changed there. But now if I do it to slash blog slash info, you'll see now I get the info site. And again, this is because this info site gets appended the conditions of slash blog and slash info through these two levels of includes that we've defined. Right? So that's cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, make it a little more interesting. So now our, somehow our administrators have said that we can't support Chrome or Firefox browsers. Again, this is made up. Um, but the, and that needs to apply to the whole marketing namespace. So what we can do now is we can just update the include from the root, right? So if I come back here to my root proxy, and this is where we defined the slash blog condition before, right? And this is how the marketing team got slash blog um, included to them. What we're going to do is we're going to add a couple extra includes. So we're going to add these two header includes. And what we're going to say is that any any user agent that has that is Chrome or Firefox should not route to them. So you have not contains. So this inverses the contains. So basically, it's any request slash blog that's not Chrome or Firefox. So really, Safari should work then. And we haven't changed any other proxy. You see here, we're only changing the root. The children proxies in the marketing namespace haven't changed at all. So let's go ahead and apply this one. All right, we've configured that. So now if I do a curl to slash blog slash info, what you'll see here is I get the info site. Right. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I confused myself there. So let's go back to my curl. So I got the info site. And that's because my user agent right now is curl. Right, so it doesn't match Firefox and it doesn't match Chrome. So I got, I got routed through properly to the right place. If I go ahead and change this and I add a user agent of Chrome, what you'll see now is I get the default site. Because if you look back to our requests, we'll see here that we don't match these conditions. So what happens is, is that Contour routes us back to what does match. So what does match is we, we match slash because it's the only app that matches this um, request, right? And that's how we got to the default site. Cool. So you can see how these includes now flow through down to everything um, and see the power of them. So we have the ability now to expand on these conditions if we see fit. Um, we can route on path prefix. We can route on headers. Um, there's, there's a lot more coming with this. Um, Thanks for your time. I encourage you to walk through this by yourself. Please give us feedback. Give us uh, information, anything you'd like or don't like about this. Uh, you can find us at Project Contour on Twitter. We're at hashtag Contour on, this, on the Cube Slack, as well as on GitHub. So thanks a lot.